Hello students, welcome to all. Today in this lecture we are going to study the choice of wash liquid and the conditions for ideal wash. So let's start with the first point, the choice of wash liquid. The choice of wash liquid is determined from the following three classes. First one, the solution which prevent the precipitate from becoming colloidal and passing through the filter paper. Okay. The, uh, the precipitates which are of colloidal in nature, okay, which are curdy in nature, for such precipitate, a solution which prevent the precipitate from becoming colloid and passing through the filter paper are used. Gelatinous, flocculated or curdy precipitates generally show a tendency to become colloidal. Gelatinous, curdy and Loculated. That precipitates are generally having tendency to become colloidal. So, for washing of such precipitates, a solution which containing an electrolyte, most frequently a salt, is used as a wash liquid. For example, gelatinous precipitate of hydrous oxide of ferric iron and aluminium is washed with ammonium nitrate solution. Here, ammonium nitrate solution is a solution of electrolyte which is useful for the uh, washing of gelatinous precipitate of hydrous oxides. Okay, another example is the curdy precipitate of silver chloride is washed with 1% nitric acid solution. So, second case is what? Solution which reduces the solubility of the precipitate. Okay, we have to use such wash solution okay wash electrolyte which reduces the solubility of precipitate for example the wash liquid may contain a moderate concentration of a substance with one ion in common with the precipitate the wash liquid should contain a common ion with the precipitate and we know that due to the common ion effect the solubility of precipitate is reduced okay therefore the common ion effect thus reduces the solubility of the precipitate Generally, organic solvents such as alcohol are sometimes used to reduce the solubility effects. Organic solvents are used to reduce the solubility of inorganic salts. We know that the effect of solvent. For example, 100 ml of pure water at 25 degrees Celsius dissolve 0.7 mg of calcium oxalate. But the same volume of dilute ammonium oxalate solution dissolve only a negligible weight of salt. Okay, pure water. Okay, 100 ml of pure water at 25 degrees Celsius dissolve what? 0.7 mg of calcium oxalate. But if we replace that pure water by dilute ammonium oxalate solution, then it dissolve only a negligible weight of salt. Therefore, it reduces the solubility of precipitate because in that solution <coughs> ammonium oxalate and calcium oxalate okay in these two the oxalate ion is common and due to the presence of common ion solubility of calcium oxalate is reduced okay it is the second category and third one is solution which prevents the hydrolysis of salt like weak acid and Basis. We have to use such wash liquid which prevents the hydrolysis of salt of weak acid and bases. Okay, here we consider one example. If a salt of weak acid such as those of ferric iron, aluminium or chromium and tin are being separated from a precipitate like silica by washing with water. Okay, if the precipitate of these ions are present then it is separate. Uh, then are being separated from a precipitate like silica by washing with water. The salt tends to hydrolyze. If we use a water as wash liquid, then these salts are tend to hydrolyze and their insoluble basic salts or hydrous oxides are retained by the filter paper and thus contaminate the precipitate. So, in this case, generally, Okay, look at the reaction. Here ferric chloride, it get hydrolyzed. Okay, form Fe2O3, thrice H2O. Hydrous oxides. Okay, there is a formation of hydrous oxide. Since an acid is formed, here is the byproduct is acid. Here acid is formed in a reaction of this type. The addition of an acid to the wash liquid will reverse the equilibrium. If in that solution of ferric chloride, 
okay it get hydrolyzed to form hydrous oxides or ferric oxide okay and then there is the formation of acid if we add a addition if we add a acid into that solution okay the reverse process will occur reverse process will occur and will reverse the equilibrium and thus prevent the formation of insoluble hydrous oxide so in such cases when there is a formation of uh, insoluble basic salts of or hydrous oxides are possible then at that time the addition of strong acid re uh, will reverse the process okay and thus prevents the formation of insoluble hydrous oxide okay these are the three classes by using which we can become able to choice the wash liquid then the next point is the ideal wash liquid should satisfy following conditions these are the conditions which should which must be satisfied by ideal wash liquid ideal wash okay it should not dissolve the precipitate but dissolve the impurities okay that ideal wash liquid or washing solution which dissolves only uh, which not dissolve precipitate which dissolves only the impurities wash liquid should have no dispersive action on the precipitate like peptization that wash liquid have no dispersive action on the precipitate it cannot be react with precipitate Pre peptization cannot be takes place it should not form any volatile or insoluble insoluble product with the precipitate wash liquid should not form any volatile or insoluble product with the precipitate it should be easily volatile at temperature of drying of the precipitate our wash liquid should be easily volatile it should not contain any substance which may interfere with the subsequent determination in the filter okay wash liquid should not interfere during the subsequent determination in the filter these are the condition which must be satisfied by ideal wash liquid that is it should not dissolve the precipitate only dissolve impurities it should not uh, it should not it not having action on the precipitate it should not form any volatile or insoluble product with the precipitate it should be easily volatile at the drying temperature of the precipitate it should not contain any substance which may interfere with the subsequent determination in the filtered okay these are the conditions of ideal drying and ignition of precipitates after filtering and washing the precipitate it is brought to a constant composition before it is wet for this purpose a precipitate have to be dried or ignited okay in order to brought a precipitate to a constant composition then operations like drying or ignition are used what is the difference between drying and ignition when the temperature employed for the process is below 250 degrees celsius this operation is called drying and when the temperature employed for this process is between 250 degrees celsius to 1200 degrees celsius the operation is called ignition there is a difference between these two when temperature is below 250 process is called drying and when temperature is between 250 degrees celsius to 1200 degrees celsius process is called ignition precipitates which have to be ignited are collected on filter paper okay or these are on porcelain filtering crucible or silica filtering crucibles etc and ignited by placing in a special ignition dish or in a larger nickel crucible and heated with an appropriate burner or electrically heated by placing in a muffled furnace okay the precipitate is ignited by placing in a special ignition dish or in a larger nickel crucibles or the precipitate is heated with an appropriate burner or electrically heated by placing in a muffled furnace the information supplied by thermogravimetric analysis is useful here okay the ignition temperature of the precipitate is determined by using thermogravimetric analysis so the information supplied by thermogravimetric analysis is useful here it tells us the proper temperature that should be used for drying 
or igniting the precipitate to get a desired composition. So, thermoplasmatic analysis is also important. It gives us information about the ignition temperature of the precipitate. Incineration of the filter paper in the presence of precipitate. Okay, here we see the procedure of incineration. Porcelain crucibles are cheap and they are used for this operation. Okay, it is a porcelain crucible. These are cheap and useful for the uh, this operation. Silica crucibles are preferred because of the major resistance to thermal shock, but they are expensive. The crucible is first ignited to a constant weight at the same temperature as that to which the precipitate is ultimately heated. Okay, firstly the crucible is ignited to a constant weight at the same temperature as that to which the precipitate is ultimately heated. Then the crucible is cooled and wet. Okay, firstly only the empty crucible is ignited. Okay, empty crucible is ignited to a constant weight. Then that crucible is cooled and wet. Then the crucible is kept on a pipelet triangle. Okay, here the black in color. It is a fly pipe clay triangle. The crucible is kept on a pipe clay triangle. The crucible is clipped slightly inclined, partly covered by the lid. The crucible is heated with the filter paper and precipitated on a low flame for some time. Okay. The crucible is heated which containing filter paper and precipitate. Okay. Firstly, it is heated on low flame for some time. The filter paper loses moisture and slowly chars. Okay. The filter paper which containing precipitate, it is placed in crucible. Okay. That crucible is placed on pipe clay triangle. Then it is heated at constant temperature for some time. Okay. The filter paper then loses moisture and slowly chars. It is not allowed to catch fire. The filter paper is not allowed to catch fire because in such case, some particles of the precipitate might be lost with the gaseous product of combustion. So, filter paper is not allowed to catch fires because some particle of the precipitate okay, may be lost along with the gaseous product of the combustion. After charring, the Charring of filter paper is complete. The flame is increased. The crucible is heated for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Then flame is increased. The crucible is heated for about 20 to 30 minutes. When all the filter paper is burned. Okay. When flame is increased, the filter paper will be burned. Okay. That filter paper is heated for 20 to 30 minutes. So, when all the filter paper is burned off, all the carbon sticking to the side of the crucible is removed. The crucible is kept erect. It is then covered with lead and strongly heated. When the ignition is over, the crucible and lead are cooled for 5 minutes and kept in desiccator. Okay, For cooling purpose, desiccator is used. Due to the uh, desiccator, that crucible cannot absorb moisture okay therefore when ignition is over the crucible and the lead are cooled for five minutes and kept in a desiccator then lastly the crucible and lead are then fed crucible and lead are then fed and last step is what then last step is calculation by using a appropriate Stoichiometry, we can calculate the weight of element which is present in the given sample. So, it is the electro, sorry, it is a gravimetric process. It involves various steps. First step is the preparation of solution. Then second one is the precipitation. Then filtration. Then washing, drying ignition the next step is what 
weighing and calculations okay it is the gravimetric analysis so today we will stop here thank you